76, Louisville, Kentucky to Honolulu, Hawaii. They're carrying about 220,000 pounds of fuel altogether. That's about 34,000 gallons of fuel. That's a lot of fuel. It, they're in their most critical phase of flight, the takeoff. I explained that on the last video. They're the heaviest they're ever going to be. They're most, they're most fueled up they're ever going to be. They've got the power all the way full forward, so they don't have a lot of reserve power to call on. And they're fully configured. The landing gear is down. All the flaps are down to initially get airborne. You, you see the airplane, I'll show you that video again, in super slow-mo this time. You, you see them initially try to get off the ground, but they limp and they don't quite get up in the air. I'll explain why that happened. But uh, right at what's called V1, and V1 is a speed that the computer on the airplane actually calls out for us. It's one that we calculate ourselves as the pilots, but at V1, that's the go, no-go speed. In other words, you don't have enough runway left in front of you to reject the land. Landing. That's the technical expression for it, to stop on the pavement in front of you. So once you hear V1, every commercial pilot is trained that you continue to fly. You keep the power full up and you roll until you can lift that airplane off the ground and it might limp into the air, but it's going to fly and it's going to take off in the runway that you've got remaining. So you can't, you're not trained to reject the takeoff after V1. What we clearly know from this incident, since they go off the runway at 184 knots, is that they were past V1 because they do not attempt to reject the takeoff. If they'd gotten on the brakes and pulled the power back, um, they would have slowed down significantly. They would have hit the same buildings, but they would have been going slower. That's neither here nor there. They're not trained to do that. They're trained to take off in that scenario. So somewhere between V1 and rotate, they have this catastrophic failure of the number one engine. Now, the, the engine, uh, as we know, separated from the aircraft. And uh, the uh, what we don't know is what happened to one of the other engines. And I'll, again, I'm going to explain that in a minute. The number one engine actually comes off the airplane. Now, there's a couple of reasons it could have come off. One is, in this aircraft design, the MD-11 and the DC-10, I flew the DC-10 for a long time. 